My name is Donald Thibault. I'm the Director of Product Management here at Hedera. I'm joined by some of my colleagues, including uh, Brady from our product marketing team and Simi from the product team as well. Uh, and we wanted to take this time, as we typically do, just to review some of the key updates to the Hedera mainnet, um, improvements to the Hedera mirror node, uh, as well as call out a few new features and demos, uh, particularly around scheduled transactions. Um, from there, we'll jump into a review of the Hedera improvement proposal process um, and call out some of the key updates that have been occurring over the past few weeks there um, before passing it back to Simi to talk about some of the upcoming deprecations as well as SDK migration to version two. As always, we'll keep an eye on the Q&A, but we'll also do uh, a more targeted Q&A at the end. So feel free to either drop them uh, in the chat there or, uh, or, or, or we'll follow up on them later. Um, so with that, I'll uh, dive right in talking about what we've seen with the latest mainnet release. Um, so this one is actually a little out of cycle. Normally we do it between the public test net and the mainnet update, but we wanted to schedule this one for the start of the month uh, after our mainnet update just this past Thursday. Um, so this Thursday was the release of version 0.13.2, which primarily uh, included the release of a new feature we're calling scheduled transactions, which allows multi-sig transactions to be consolidated on the network uh, for submission once those signatures have been collected. Um, Semi is going to go through the capability um, shortly, as well as some of the docs uh, that we've updated with the scheduled transactions. So you'll hear more about this uh, later on. Um, we've also made some updates to the system files at 0.0.101 and 102, um, otherwise known as the address books. And these are really designed to make the address books more scalable and consumable. So if you've got a client application or a mirror node that relies on these uh, files, um, or for instance, you're using the SDKs, uh, you should be able to parse these new system files and keep an eye on them as network changes occur um, and as things are updated on uh, the node side. Um, a few other enhancements. Um, we implemented another uh, command line interface tool that supports some of the network testing and upgrades. Um, and you'll see a few other smaller fixes as well as a few bug fixes. Now, we just recently also released version 0.32.0 of the mirror node. Um, this includes a few updates, such as supporting for scheduled transactions, which was done in a previous release, um, but now again is supported on both public testnet and mainnet, uh, as well as saw continued performance improvements for things like latency and throughput for uh, mirror node operators themselves. We're really excited to see uh, an increasing number of mirror node operators, more companies standing up their own. So please, if, if you're a developer and, and interested in doing so yourself, don't hesitate to reach out on Discord or let us know how we might be able to support you and your team there. So now I'm gonna pass it to Simi, uh, who's gonna talk through scheduled transactions specifically uh, before we jump back into the Hedera improvement proposals. Thanks, so, Donald. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Hey, everyone. Hope everyone's enjoying their day today. Just going to go over a few things. Um, I'll start with scheduled transactions. Um, the doc site has been updated um, with coding samples um, of how to do each of these operations that you see on the screen. Um, it gives you a little bit of an overview, um, as well as sample code in each of the languages, as you would probably normally expect with each of our other APIs. Um, we also do have a tutorial that's up as well. So um, this will take you from creating a transaction to schedule and um, taking that transaction and then um, using the APIs to get that transaction scheduled and then um, following through with um, submitting signatures for that transaction via the network and then um, Lastly, just being able to verify that that scheduled transaction was triggered and also to verify that scheduled transaction was executed as well. Um, so you can check out this tutorial to get all of that information. 
Um, currently we have samples for V2, uh, V1 samples will be coming soon as well. And a couple of the reminders um, for our deprecations, um, our account balance CSV file uh, will be deprecated in the, uh, or removed in the uh, upcoming July release, and we'll be using this new um, proto format. So um, if you need to do that migration between the old CSV file to the new um, proto file format, uh, we encourage you to, to do that. Um, Donald mentioned um, these deprecations here that were tied to the last release. So each of these um, fields will be marked as deprecated. Um, they will not be removed. So mirror node operators can parse old address book files. But what will happen um, is that in, I believe, the October release, um, these fields here will no longer be populated. And um, to parse new address book files, um, you'll have to make the update to use this service endpoint here um, to be able to parse those address book files. And the last thing that I wanted to cover is uh, we're getting ready to deprecate v1 of the Java and JavaScript SDKs. Um, if you need to make that migration, if you haven't done so already, you can find a migration document in each of the repositories. And that migrating document um, goes over everything that's changed between v1 and v2, so it can help serve as a guide um, while you're migrating um, from v1 to v2. Um, we'll be marking these SDKs as deprecated um, for six months, and uh, that'll take us all the way up until October. And um, after that um, October release, we uh, will no longer be supporting the V1 of the SDKs and expect that um, all users will be upgraded to V2. Um, during this uh, deprecation period, we still will upgrade um, V1 with any new Hedera APIs. Um, so if, if there's any changes or updates there, uh, the V1 SDK will include that up until the uh, month of October. And um, I think that's all I have for my updates here. Donald, I don't know if there's anything else I might have missed, but I can pass it back over to you if you want to go over the head dare improvement proposals. Excellent. Thank you, Simi. Um, I see a question here on scheduled transactions about whether the plan is to incorporate all transaction types into the API. Um, that absolutely is the plan where we'll add new transaction types with support for scheduled transactions. Um, we haven't yet defined which will come next or when, um, but this would be a great opportunity uh, to engage or create a Hedera improvement proposal or even just a discussion forum about which uh, transaction types would be most beneficial to implement next. Um, so if you've got an opinion on, on which would come or which would be most useful for, for you, um, would love to hear kind of what that interest is and, and how we can uh, best support you uh, getting that support. Um, so with that, we wanted to jump into the Hedera improvement proposals uh, as something we'll be covering on these webinars in a pretty standard way going forward. Um, so just as a refresher for those who haven't been keeping an eye on, on some of the forums, um, our goal is that we can drive and get input from the community throughout the full life cycle of our roadmap or features that go into our roadmap. So we've really, in the last couple of weeks, been pushing uh, the use of Hedera improvement proposals, both internally and externally, as the forum where we release initial feature designs or implementation outlines, um, as well as engage and get input from the community or even designs and proposals from the community about what we should build next and when. Um, so the discussions tab within our Hedera improvement proposals GitHub repo is where we see the discussion starting to emerge around both specific HIPs, things like how we might add a new feature or service, as well as general discussions which could eventually result in HIPs. Um, so again, we really want to ensure on a recurring basis that we're covering these HIPs. Some of you may have remembered our last webinar uh, where we had Sam from Luther Systems uh, talk about their um, Hedera improvement proposal for creating an NFT metadata JSON schema. Uh, so we'll hopefully be bringing on more HIP authors to present their HIPs and solicit additional feedback into what it is they want to build. So I'll cover a few specific um, updates. Uh, first and foremost, 
uh, HIP 15, which is nearing the stage for final comment, has been updated uh, to change the template of our leader or our, our lead intro content um, to move from a table to be bullet points, just so it's a little bit more consumable. Um, so because this is an update to the format, we'll update that to our HIP 1, which outlines that format as well. The second major update is you should see a few discussions as well as HIPs themselves on uh, Hedera token service, specifically in the context of non-fungible tokens. Um, so HIP 17 uh, was released a couple of days ago by one of our community members as well, uh, which outlines how the Hedera token service can be improved to better support scalable non-fungible tokens beyond its current support. Um, so this is one that the team's really excited about, and we know that there's been a lot of interest in from the community. Um, so please feel free to drop into the discussion here, you know, respond, call out anything you think can be improved or changed, or even just let us know of the use cases that might be uh, relevant for you with that improvement proposal. Now, one of the specific use cases, which uh, we think is really interesting for NFTs, is how this can apply to the ecological carbon credit uh, tokenization and taxonomy space. Um, so you can see one of the work in progress HIPs that was started uh, by another community member and the discussion is ongoing as well uh, in, in this discussions forum. So I'd really encourage you to drop in there and, and see if there's anything that's interest you or things that maybe we can uh, potentially improve on. Um, I'll also mention the HIP I, I discussed uh, earlier, the NFT metadata schema. Um, from the Luther, uh, Sam and the Luther Systems team. Um, that likely will also be nearing final comments soon. So please uh, take a look at that HIP and see if there's anything you'd like to improve or change or update. So with that, um, I think we've covered each of our key agenda items here. Let me just open up the Q&A and see if there's any other questions uh, as well. Okay, none so far. Um, so again, I'll, I'll just, as we wait for perhaps a, a, a next set of questions, um, really we would love to see any additional feedback, input or ideas in some of these HIPs. Um, there's a few that we're aware of even coming down the line, but really we're excited to see it engage um, via the community for improvements. Um, you'll even see here some key network features like auto renewal or the feature uh, which allows Hedera accounts and other entities to pay for renewal on the network for them to be stored over time. Um, this will be critical for many client applications and exchanges as well. So I'll make sure uh, to call that one out for you to review the design and understand what the implications might be um, for your application or your usage. Um, we'll also probably even have HIPs here around components of features, like whether it's calculations for pricing or other changes that might impact the network. You'll see those come through in the HIP process primarily as well. I still don't see any more questions here, so maybe we'll just give it a, another minute or two um, and close it out from there. So one... Uh, a question that came across is with the new tokens being minted, uh, there is currently a limit of 1,000 tokens that can be associated with an account. Um, so this question is about the Hedera token service currently. Any account on Hedera can associate with up to 1,000 unique token entities. Um, this includes both the account which is creating the token so currently that cap is fixed and we haven't yet planned to increase that cap. Um, but certainly if there's use cases which drive the need to uh, increase that limit, certainly in a way that's sustainable for performance, um, we could absolutely consider that. Again, I'll, I'll push uh, the HIP process as a great way to suggest a HIP for maybe increasing the cap. Um, however, if you need to increase that limit, maybe to show relationships between account creators and the tokens they created, we have started to see some models emerge where you can trace the creating account of a token back to the account which created that account and therefore see almost the tree of relationships between uh, these different tokens and their associated creators. 
Um, so I think there's definitely a, a lot of interesting ways to help scale the number of tokens that can be created uh, in total. Um, I'll also mention in the context of NFTs, and you'll see this outlined in HIP 17, you can also massively increase the number of unique uh, tokens or unique serial numbers as we call them within a given class, which can also address potentially some of the scalability issues depending on the architecture of your token. So for instance, if there's uh, you know, 1,000 or 10,000 um, unique trading cards or unique posters, that will be much more attainable uh, with this improvement to the Hedera token service and subsequently the ability to have those held in different accounts. All right, I'll just do one more call for comment and see if there's any last questions uh, before we break. All righty. Well, seeing none, uh, thank you all so much for the time on this uh, Monday morning. I hope you all have a great start to your week uh, and look forward to talking again soon on our next monthly Engineering Insights webinar. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.